Someone's gone viral on social media for all of the wrong reasons. And the video is of this guy here. His name is Vishen Lakiani, and according to his Wikipedia page, he's an entrepreneur, an author, and a motivational speaker. And in this video, he makes a few standout claims, let's say. Now, if you're not subscribed to my channel, I am a published health researcher specializing in muscle health, and we're gonna to react to this video today to see if what he's saying has any legitimacy behind it. Okay, without further ado, let's get into it. After you turn 30, your body loses 1% of muscle every year. It's called sarcopenia. So in the general population, we lose about 5% of our muscle mass every decade after the age of 30, but that's an average. So that's taking into account all of the muscle we lose between ages 30 and the day we die. Now, Vision says that we we lose 1% per year after the age of 30. And I have seen this quoted in the scientific literature, but it's written slightly differently. The way he puts it, you would almost think that between ages 30 and 40, you'd lose 10% of your muscle mass because that's 1% per year. It's not a linear relationship. We don't just see muscle loss kind of immediately start at age 30 and, and kind of drop off a cliff. In reality, muscle loss is barely detectable between ages 30 and 40, with a lot of scientific papers even saying it doesn't start at all till you're 40. And even after age 40, the rate of loss loss is relatively slow until we reach about 70 years. So it's about 5 to 8% per decade, depending on the source you're looking at. But when you get past 70, that's where we see that rate start to really accelerate to around 15% muscle loss per decade. Also, if we're being picky, he's used the term sarcopenia wrong. He's right in that sarcopenia does pertain to loss of muscle mass and strength. However, it is actually a disease in its own right. It's a disease of muscle insufficiency. Just generally losing muscle mass and strength as we age is called aging. Uh, and that is isn't necessarily sarcopenia. Not everyone is going to get sarcopenia, but everyone who lives to maybe, you know, 70 or 80 is going to experience muscle and strength loss. I feel like that's a lot of moaning by me from for one short clip, so we're going to play it on a little but bit. But if you're doing weight training, you got to take enough protein. So I take four eggs and then I take some veggies, some broccoli or something on the side. So I, I, eat I mean, nothing much to say here. He's spot on with the whole protein intake thing, particularly in older age, get this kind of anabolic blunting where our muscles become slightly less sensitive to when we consume protein or even when we do a resistance training session. So yeah, spot on on, uh, on that one. Build muscle. Musculature is the one thing about your body that has the highest correlation with longevity. You do not build... Okay, yeah. I mean, that's kind of interesting. I mean, it's, it's actually more muscle strength than mass that correlates with longevity. Muscle mass does also correlate, but to a lesser degree. In fact, when we measure it, we see that people with the lowest strength in society uh, generally have about a 24% increased risk of dying from any cause compared to those with the highest strength. But the interesting thing is that that is regardless of things like age, the job that they do, uh, smoking status, their general physical activity level. And this is backed up by loads of, of other studies. There's another one here that, that says for every one kilogram stronger your, your grip is, uh, you have about a 0.9% decreased risk of dying again from any cause. So maybe this talk isn't that bad, actually. He's saying some interesting things. Yoga, you do not build muscle mass from aerobic. You actually destroy muscle mass if you do long distance running. Again, he's he's not too far off here. Um, I don't know about the word destroying. I think that's quite a harsh word to, to use. Uh, but yeah, if you go from a sport like bodybuilding and you start to take up long distance running, uh, you will likely lose muscle bulk in your lower body. Now this happens for many reasons, but one of which is we see this muscle fiber type switch happen in our body where our type two muscle fibers start to convert into type one muscle fibers. Now type two fibers, for those who don't know, those are larger in size. They're able to cope with a, exerting a high degree of force, uh, but they do fatigue easily and that's why your body starts to favor the production of type 1 muscle fibers which are better at that and there is another reason which I think is probably having more of an impact um, which is simply your energy expenditure increasing we know that in a sport like long distance running your energy expenditure goes up quite considerably especially if you were going from doing no running to all of a sudden running quite a bit which means if your diet stays the same your body will not hesitate to get rid of any metabolically expensive body tissue of which your muscles are of top priority because because they require a lot of energy to keep alive. So if you're not using all of that muscle bulk, your body will happily burn any excess for energy. Let's carry on because I think this is probably, based on the comments, about to get quite juicy. Running, long distance running, according to Doug McGuff, the exercise pioneer, is stupid. It is ah, see, I can see now where the controversy is coming in. So it might not surprise you, uh, this guy is completely and utterly wrong on this. Uh, now, don't get me wrong, I am one of the biggest proponents for strength training uh, and just gaining muscle mass for longevity purposes. But as much as I hate to admit it, 
running makes you live longer. Actually, there was a really recent study on this exact topic, and they looked at the first 200 athletes to ever run a sub four minute mile. So these were really high level runners. Now, a lot of them have passed away now, but their running schedule, their training they were doing would have been off the charts. And the study found that these people on average lived 4.7 years beyond their predicted life expectancy. And again, these results fall in line with much larger studies that we have in the general population. For example, this one here summarized the results of 33 smaller studies where they had over a hundred thousand participants in total and they quantified this so they found that for every one kilometer per hour faster that you could run uh, you had about a 13 percent decrease risk of dying from any cause so don't get me wrong strength training is important and maybe just as important but the real major bits of scientific evidence that we have to date lean towards cardiovascular exercise being one of if not the most effective thing that you can do to prevent cardiovascular disease, which is still the leading cause of death for both men and women. So I suppose to sum up, lifting weights is really important, but please don't just lift weights. Unless you want to be the person who can deadlift 800 pounds, but can't walk up the stairs without getting out of breath and dies of a heart attack age 70. So the moral of the story here is be careful whose advice you take online. Check their credentials. This guy, I couldn't find a single credential in this field to always get your information from a range of sources and people who are credible. So thanks for watching everyone and as always I will see you soon in another video.